This week in science, we found out how physicists do it. So how did you do this? Why this invention was so impressive it needed an epic Hollywood zoom. And why it's a good thing that this worm has anxiety just like you. Australian physicists have developed a unique single atom sensor that can measure minuscule forces. In our most recent publication in the Journal of Science Advances, we go to the extreme and we show that using a single atom, you're able to measure sub-atom Newton forces. But exactly how big is that force? That's equivalent to, say, the gravitational force between a person in Brisbane and a person in Canberra. Or to put it another way, it's the same magnitude as someone in Canberra's desire to live in Canberra. It can measure forces as low as 100 zeptonewtons, and because no one in their right mind actually needs to know what that is, that's 0.0000000000000000001 newtons. Yes. The way they made this super sensor is they placed a positively charged single atom in an extreme vacuum, like that found in deep space or between Donald Trump's ears, and slowed it down by cooling it to close to absolute zero. They were then able to monitor its reaction to forces with nanometer precision. The measurements could be used to miniaturize quantum computers, and the supervisor says that if they work hard enough, she'll eventually let them out of the lab. Fabric stretched to near breaking point isn't just a way to describe middle-aged men in lycra, it's now a way to generate electricity too. Scientists have created a fabric that converts kinetic energy through stretching into electrical power. Normally these sort of things are only used for sensors, but this time scientists have shown they can use the energy to power electrical devices. They created the fabric by weaving together two types of thread, piezoelectric threads and conductive threads. The scientists believe that the research is at a stage where they can weave it into commercial fabrics. And finally, anxiety is the driving force behind mankind's greatest achievements, but when it reaches the level of a PhD student, it's time to seek out treatment. One in five humans have some kind of anxiety-related condition. This number is pretty amazing. Uh, you know, we, in 2013, for which we have the last known record, 170 million prescriptions are given for antidepressants and anti-anxiety medications. Despite all these large numbers of prescriptions, we do not have effective therapies that we could prescribe to somebody suffering from anxiety or somebody suffering from a panic condition. Scientists are looking for better ways to treat anxiety, and they've stumbled upon a strange animal model to better understand human anxiety conditions. They use this tiny disgusting creature, the nematode worm. By analyzing the responses and reactions of worms exposed to chemicals secreted by its natural predator, the team uncovered a rudimentary fear-like response that has parallels to human anxiety. They gave the worms an anti-anxiety drug called Zoloft, which is commonly used to treat human anxiety conditions, and they found that it worked just as well. We used Zoloft to, to treat the C. elegans, and we found that Treating the worms with Zoloft reduced their responses to the predator in both their, their immediate behavior and also their long-term effects. The scientists are hoping they can use the worm to find new prescriptions to treat anxiety conditions. And anxiety can be found everywhere, like deciding whether or not you need to speak up at a meeting, or when you're leaving a building at the same time as someone, you don't know whether to walk really fast and in front of them, slow so that you're behind them, or together so you have to put up with some boring conversation. 